Charles, Miami, Florida. Hey, Charles, what's on your mind? Hi, Tom. Um, can you hear me okay? Just fine, yeah. Is my voice a little faint on your end? People ask me that a lot. A wee bit, but, 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 I, but I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just calling to make a suggestion. Um, on one of your shows, I think it was the conversation with the great minds, and it was over a year ago, you were conversing with someone, and the, and the comment came up that what is the purpose of an economy? Mm. And I, I thought it was such a great question that, like, we all should answer. And, you know, our, our, the presidential candidates at the time, it would have been nice if they answered it. And I, I, I want to suggest to you that um, perhaps you could ask people, especially your guests when you get them on, what do they envision a, 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 an economy? What's the purpose of an economy? And what do they envision a society would look like as a consequence of their vision? Yeah. How would the society function as a result of the uh, economic perspectives that they have or even the policy objectives that they have? And I think, you know, it could, it, well, it, it's so, we, I think so few of us really understand economics really well. And I just finished a course by Thomas Sowell, who's a pretty right winger. But it was very good because it opened my eyes up about supply and demand and how society really functions and how society can function. And I was hoping that uh, maybe you could get some dialogues with people to put them up against the wall, both left and right. Mm -hmm. What would happen as a consequence of, of your objectives, of the things that you're advocating for? Right. Well, you know, the probably the first really famous economist to address that question when economics was just first emerging as a science um, was, was Adam Smith. And it wasn't his book, The Wealth of Nations, which everybody always quotes, that asked that question, why do you have an economy? But it was his book, A Theory of Moral Sentiments, and which is the less famous and, frankly, far more important book that Adam Smith wrote. And it was published in the 1770s. And in A Theory of Moral Sentiments, Adam Smith comes right out and asks that question, you know, what, what is the purpose of an economy? And then answers it, essentially, saying... The reason, now I'm wildly paraphrasing, I'm taking, you know, like in chapters of the book and turning them into sentences here, but, but uh, in essence what he says, and then David Ricardo expanded this somewhat in 1817 in his uh, On Labor and On Profits and, and some of his writings, but basically what they were saying was that we create an economy, we, ha we create a government to provide for the common good, the general welfare, you know, the, those phrases that are in the preamble to the Constitution. The government then creates an economy by providing a currency that allows the economy to work and by providing basic rules within which an economy has to work. And the reason why the government creates the economy is the same reason why we created the government in the first place, and that is for the benefit of the people, of the populace. And so we, if, if we were to ask that simple question, and Charles, you really nailed it, of Every piece of legislation that has economic impact, which is almost every piece of legislation, what impact will this legislation have on average working people via its impact on the economy? If we were to start asking that question, we would start passing some very, very, very different kinds of legislation than we have right now. But instead, I think that there's a, a broad belief among Americans because they don't have any training in economics that the purpose of an economy is so that people can get rich. And that's not the purpose of an economy. The purpose of an economy is so that the largest number of people, in the, in the, through their own efforts, you know, with appropriate incentives, can produce the highest quality of life, of life, both for themselves and for society as a whole. And is anything that I just said inconsistent with what you learned when you studied economics? No, it isn't. And, and I would take it even further because I think we need to have the in-depth conversations. An economy, a society is going to result as a consequence of an economy. And, you, you know, you're going to have houses and cities and, sure. and the, the level of... Um, well, there's a certain chicken and egg. Well, you could also say an economy yeah. will come about as a result of a society, but yes. Okay, and, and, and I, I, I actually would vote for an economy you know, creates a society. But, yes, if, if you had, you would have to have an awful lot of government control for a society to create an economy. 
but if it, for an economy to create a society. Well, no, no, you don't. Well, you've got you've got twelve of us in a in a family or a tribe, and yeah. and we we have to decide. You know, we have different skills. We have to decide how we're going to trade goods and how we're going to trade skills. And you go back and you look at like okay. the city of Corral from six thousand years ago. They, you know, they were, there was one tribe that was rich with sardines, and there was another tribe that grew cotton and was making nets. The sardine people needed the nets. The net making people needed the sardines. I've been in those at the pyramids that they built down there. I wrote about it in my book uh, Threshold. Um, and seen 6,000-year-old currency, which was just knots on a string. It was just a way, an accounting form. So the societies created an economy. Okay, and, and, and that's, you know, again, chicken and the egg. But the, mm-hmm. the, big, the big thing would be to get people to think about and talk about the consequences of our, of our activities and how they impact all of us. And, I, you know, it's, I think we as a people... Americans are woefully uneducated when it comes to economics, and I think that would be a great... If people started, would actually realize what the impact of some of these policies are on the economy and how it hits them personally, right. then they might step back and say, you know, whoa, I need to be involved here. I need to be involved in this government. I need to be involved in this society politically because everything they're doing is impacting people, and certain people are taking advantage of this and yeah. making a lot more wealth than is just fair. And this is and something Republicans understand. They understand that at the end of the day, it's all about the money. Back to you, Charles. My, my, reason, my reason for calling you is, is to make that statement. How can we start to educate people? And, and you're okay. one of the few you know, avenues to do it. Well, Charles, you've, you've, you've uh, provoked me. Thank you to want to raise this question more frequently, and and I will start doing so. Thank you for the reminder, because it's been a while since we did a good show on that that issue. And I I do need, in particular with my right-wing guests, to start bringing it up. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. Charles asked one of the best questions of the day. It's a question we need to constantly be asking. Why do we have an economy? Why do we sustain and support 